I know, I know, you hate studying phrasal verbs. Well, to be honest, I, probably like most other English teachers, don't particularly enjoy teaching them. They just seem to be so illogical, don't they? The, the verb and the preposition appear to have very little to do with the actual meaning. But most phrasal verbs do have a logical origin. You just need to travel in time to find it. Some quality special effects. So let's start by looking at a couple of very common and very easy phrasal verbs, just to illustrate my point. Turn on and turn off. Now I'm sure you're familiar with the meaning of turn on and turn off, but if you think about them, they're extremely illogical on the surface. For example, if I want to turn my TV on, I press this button. There's no turning or on. What surface is is the, the remote on and, and what am I turning? I'm just pressing a button. I don't need to turn the remote control. It's the same with my mobile phone, with my computer. But here we're, we're talking about modern devices in 2021. But we have to go back in time to find the origin of these words. And we go back to the origin of electricity. Because before electricity, everything was mechanical or analog. So you, you either started up a machine or you wind up a clock. There were different ways to activate machines at that time. But then you have to think of the first use of electricity. And it was for light, the light bulb. And to activate a light bulb, you needed to turn on the switch. So either the light is off or it is on, that's the state. Something is off or on, but to, to make it on from off. In those days, the switches were knobs that you had to turn. So that's where turn on comes from. In modern times, we don't do any turning. <laughs> it's just pressing buttons, but we have to think about the origin of the, the phrasal verbs. So now a slightly more complicated example, uh, but also a very, very common phrasal verb is to hang up. Yeah, hi John, I've got to hang up, I've got another call coming. No, no John, John, I've got to hang up. John, I'm hanging up. John, I'm hanging up, I'm hanging up, I'm hanging up. So what hanging up did I do there? Usually when you think about hang, you, you think about hanging a picture on the wall or your coat on the coat rack when you come in from, from outside. But there's no hanging, I'm just pressing a button to end the call. To hang up is to end the call. A telephone call or it could be a Zoom call, a Skype call, but it's just pressing a button. But we have to go back and think of the origin of telephones many, many years ago. Um, and of course, you've probably seen them in old films or series like Downton Abbey, where you had two pieces. You had the receiver and the, the earpiece. Um, and at the end of the call, you had to literally hang up the earpiece on the, the, the receiver. So now, of course, we don't use that with modern devices. It's just pressing a button but we still use the same phrasal verb, it's to hang up. So I'm just going to give two more examples, quite advanced or even proficiency level phrasal verbs to really demonstrate my point here. The first one is to wind up, to wind somebody up. Now this means basically to annoy or to irritate or to even anger somebody. So for example, my sister is always winding me up. She, she's driving me crazy. But the verb to wind itself just means to, to twist or to, to coil a string or a rope into a ball or around something. And the original use of to wind up is from wind up a clock. So you, you turn until it, it's activated and starts working. And also you can use it for, for old toys from many years ago, which we don't see nowadays, like wind up robots. So you would write, wind up the robot and it would start moving, start walking or activating. So that's where we get to wind someone up. You, you sort of continuously annoy them until they react. So maybe they're calm and passive at the beginning, but you wind them up until they activate, until they, they get so annoyed that they have to react, they have to move. And finally, a very proficiency level phrasal verb is to knuckle down. Now to knuckle down basically means to start 
working or studying hard. So to really, to really start doing it, to, to get, get going, basically. And again, this seems illogical. A knuckle is this part of the body. On your fingers, you, in your hands, at the end of your fingers, you have knuckles. Uh, but this is actually from an old game, again, that is not played very much now, called marbles, those little hard glass balls that was played a lot in the past. And when you knuckled down, you prepared to start playing, to play your shot. So you say, knuckle down, get down to it, get start the serious business. So, of course, that's very difficult. You, you're not going to know that because you don't know the origin of, of that game or the history of, of that phrasal verb. But I just wanted to demonstrate that even the most apparently illogical phrasal verbs have some logical origin. You just need to travel in time to find them. Once you realize that there is some logical origin, it's suddenly they're not so intimidating, they're not so impossible to learn. Now, of course, you can't do that with all the phrasal verbs. Some phrasal verbs don't have an old origin, um, but they're all pretty lo logical in some ways. So in the future, I'll make another video where I explain other ways of learning phrasal verbs which don't require time travel. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me again, and I hope to see you very soon for another video. Take care. Bye.